driving. Now, before we start the presentation, as always, put your hands together for the major. Let's play a game. For this game, I want you to take out your phone. Everybody, this means everybody, grown-ups, everybody, everybody. This, my presentation is not about teens, my presentation is about everybody, everybody. So take out your phone, open, open up your text messaging app. Now, address a new text message to your favorite person in the world who is not in the room with you right now. Who is your favorite person in the room? Address a text message to them. If, if, if they're in the room with you, pick your second, second favorite. Yes, we will actually say this. Also make sure if you know the person's driving, pick someone else. If they're, if they're driving right now, don't send it. Pick someone else. So your favorite person in the world is going to get a text message. We're going to go through something, and I don't want you to hit send until I tell you to hit send. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to play a little game, and at the end of the game, you're going to hit send. So don't hit send yet. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff on the screen. Really, not that much stuff, just a few things. There's going to be a message on the screen. I want you to put that message into that text message that you're about to send. Okay? It's gonna, not this not this message. It's gonna come up in a minute. Not, not this one. We're not gonna we're not we're gonna you're not gonna send your, your person a, a message that says let's play a game. Okay, while you are entering the text message, as soon as I say go, while you are entering the text message, you will see, see some stop signs come across the screen and I want you to count them. Alright? So we're gonna see those of you who raised your hand a minute ago. We're going to see really how good you are at multitasking. All right? Let me make sure I get all my notes. It's going to take about 30 seconds. At the end of it, we'll talk. Ready? Put that into your text message. You are about to www. Getbonked.com. Are you counting the stop signs? No, don't send it yet. Okay, don't send it yet. Don't send it yet. Before we send this, I want to make sure that we got the message right. So go back and edit your message, make sure that you got it right. Nobody likes a broken link. So make sure you got everything exactly the way it is on the screen. B-O-N-C-E.com. All right, so we played that game on easy mode. That was easy mode. Because you're sitting in a room, there's no traffic, there's no other distractions, it's just you and your phone and a text message. And some stop signs. Alright? So now we're going to play this game on hard mode. I want you to turn your ringer on, turn your vibrator on, and put your phone in your pocket. And then pay attention to me. Send the message, put the phone in your pocket with the ringer on and the vibrator on, and watch me. Yes, send the message, and then put your phone in your pocket. <laughs> Leave the ring on. I promise it will not send anything to you. You just send the message to your favorite person in the book. Nothing else happened. That's all that happened. Okay, so now we're going to try that same thing but this time with no distractions because your phone's in your pocket, right? Should be a lot easier. I want us to count the stop signs this time and we're going to count them all together. You guys ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, tw
he did like soccer, he played a lot of soccer, but sports weren't really his thing. So when he got to middle school, he became the school mascot. <laughs> he was the school mascot for a season or two, and he loved it because he got to just be a clown, and people would applaud it. I mean, what's more fun than that? It did get hot at times, um, and obviously there were times that weren't that great, when you're sweating inside of a suit, but Anthony took it in stride, and he was always asking himself, how can I make this better? By the way, this picture was taken the night he did the worm across the football field. It was pretty epic. <laughs> when Anthony got to high school, he was asking himself the same question, how can I make this better? And so he joined a bunch of clubs, because he had to go to school, and if he's going to go to school, he should at least try to make it better. So he was in the French club, he was in the German club, he was in the photography club. He even joined a club that met only once, called the Foam Sword Fighting Club. And, and my favorite, he joined the Breakdancing Club. Hold on, wait for it. <laughs> oh, you turn on my volume. So 
He did that all the time. He was always pushing the limits just slightly. He liked, really liked to dress up. And so in, in seventh grade, he went to the dance wearing a white suit, a black shirt, and a purple tie. And he took a really cute girl to go. Um, this was just Anthony. He just liked to express himself. He liked to have fun. And that translated into the clothes that he wore. It translated into the way he acted. It translated into his friendships. He created some very deep, lasting friendships because he was always asking himself, how can I make this better? And at times it was this friendship. How can I make this friendship better? As he got older and got into high school, that same approach was still with him. He still was asking himself, how do I make this better? But his priorities changed a little bit. So he started wearing more comfortable clothes. He started you know, wearing looser fitting shirts and jeans. And one of the things that entered his wardrobe was a bandana. And he started wearing this bandana, not all the time, but a lot of times. And he wouldn't just wear a red bandana. He had one with chili peppers on it that he really liked. And he would wear a green one now and again. He had all kinds of colors. And pretty soon, that just became a standard part of his wardrobe. It's also why I'm wearing it today. It reminds me of Anthony. It helps me keep him connected. It helps me feel close to him. Um, sorry. Let me, let me move on. OK, so as I've mentioned, Anthony was fun. And he was fun because of that question that he was constantly asking, how can I make this better? When he was hanging out with friends, how can I make this better? Let's throw in a little twist, let's have a little fun. He met a lot of people because he was outgoing and friendly and because he was so fun to be around, he made a lot of friends. So he had a job for a couple of summers, really actually it turned into a year round thing. He had a job working at um, camp Indian Springs, which is a camp just south of Tallahassee. It's an overnight camp, it's a summer camp, it's, it's pretty amazing. And the owner of this camp is a dude named Derek. And Derek and Anthony got really close, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Derek later. But when Derek needed to shoot a promo video for Camp Indian Springs, guess who he picked? <laughs> Station. Those, those, I know there's some people here from Lincoln High School. You guys know you've been to the fun station. 
Um, who's having the most fun in this picture? <laughs> clearly, clearly there's one person who's just having a little bit better time. Anthony constantly asked himself, how can I make this better? Even when he was doing chores, he asked himself, how can I make this better? And a lot of times, he would just put on his headphones and dance around the kitchen while he's doing dishes or sweeping up the dining room. He was never shy about working because he knew that somehow he was going to have fun doing it, even if it was just a tiny little bit of, tiny little bit of fun while he's washing dishes. So everything with Anthony was fun. When you wanted to have a fun time, you knew who, who to call. And at his... At his funeral service, one of his friends got up and said, if you were bored on a Tuesday night and you needed someone to hang out with and you wanted to have a good time, Anthony was the person you called because you were guaranteed to have fun. So stuff like going to Fun Station became funner. And so did stuff like going to the movies. So when the first Avengers movie came out, Anthony and his buddy decided to make their own costumes. <laughs> and he made himself a Captain America costume and Drew, drew a star on a shirt, and that was it. And that was his costume. And they went to the movies, and they had a blast. Um, when Anthony was in the band, he was he was in he was in all kinds of bands. He was a pretty good he was a really pretty good saxophone player, and so <laughs> he would often do solos for his for his jazz band. Um, his senior year, the first concert of the year. They didn't have their tuxedos ready because it was still early in, the, early in the school year and they hadn't gotten back yet. So they didn't have tuxedos. So their band director said, all right, I need everyone to come dressed in black and or white and red. I don't, I don't think that's what he meant. But that's what Anthony did. Anthony made everything a little bit more fun. Later in the year, same year, Anthony and his band, the jazz band, they had a, a performance. And one of the songs that they had been practicing that they were going to perform has a really heavy Mexican influence. It, had, it sounds a lot like mariachi music. And Anthony had a solo. So Anthony asked himself, well, how can I make this better? How can I have a saxophone solo that's already really fun? How can I make this better? And apparently, in this particular situation, the answer to that question is sombrero. <laughs> so, he knew that his band director would never go for this. He knew that if he asked permission to wear a sombrero for his solo, his band director would say no. So he didn't ask. <laughs> I'm about to show you a video, and if you watch closely, if you watch closely, the band director who has his back turned to us right now, the, the bald guy, if you watch closely, you can see the moment where he recognizes what's happening and he thinks to himself, and you can see these thoughts go through his head, he thinks to himself, Anthony, you are the bane of my existence, but I cannot, I cannot fight your charm. Watch, you'll know what I'm talking about. Also, pay close attention to his friends. His friends are cracking up during this. So it will only take a few seconds. The biggest on Mark's car. Go 
doing it. <laughs> That's it. That's all I wanted to show you. And the reason I wanted to show you that is because of the next video. Anthony, when he was a senior in high school, had to do a project where he submitted a video for economics class. And the video was um, graded, and it was supposed to be an explanation of stocks versus bonds. Okay, it's for an economics class. So that sounds really dull. And I'm sure that teacher had to sit through a lot of really dull videos. But this one is not one of them. He had been in leadership positions the whole three years he had been there. 
But when it came time to make the selection for, for the leader of the marching band, for the drum major, Mr. P chose two other people over Anthony, and Anthony was heartbroken. <coughs> now, in Mr. P's defense, this was his marching band, and he didn't want a loose cannon like Anthony in charge of 50 kids, and he may have a point. Um, just being honest and being fair. Either way, Anthony was really upset. He was devastated. Um, he came home, and he was just frustrated and sad and mad and heartbroken. And he was like that for a couple of days, which was really not very common. He didn't usually get that upset for that long. So after a few days of seeing him like this, I kind of stopped him in the, in the dining room. And we had a long conversation about his, his pain that he was going through. Um, and I said to him, because he was really frustrated, he was, he was on the verge of tears, and he was talking about quitting the band, and he was just angry, and I, I said, look, you're a strong person, and strength is not measured by succeeding without failing. Strength is measured by failing and then rising again to succeed. That is strength. Anthony immediately perked up, and he said, yes. Yes, Dad, you are right. If I get knocked off this Bronco six times, I'm going to get up seven. And that was the last I ever heard of it. He was never sad about it again. That is one of Anthony's true strengths. So, Anthony eventually, he got his revenge in little ways on the band director, because he and the band director were not buddies. They were colleagues. So he got his revenge in little ways, like the white suit, and the sombrero, and then there was a pet rabbit. And they were auctioning off, they were raising money, so they had an auction, and they, one of the prizes, one of the things you could buy, was you could pie a teacher in the face with a whipped cream pie. One of the teachers on auction was Mr. P. The winner of the auction, Justice. Can you make it out? In the face. Justice. So Anthony got his, he got his revenge in little ways. Anthony had another kind of, uh, he had another kind of strength. It's, it was a work ethic. And I don't really have a whole lot of pictures to go with this, so I'm just going to show you a few pictures of random jobs that he had. When he was about 15, Anthony started working, or he started going to a youth group called TOK. And TOK stands for the Outdoor Kids. And the guy who runs TOK is this guy named Derek, who you saw a few minutes in the video of Camp Indian Springs. Derek and Anthony became really good friends really quickly. And Derek has a bunch of businesses in and around Tallahassee. And he's a really great guy who does lots of things for, for young people in Tallahassee. Um, so Derek, when he met Anthony, he recognized this person as someone who was smart and someone who had a good work ethic. So he started hiring him for all of the different businesses that he has. One of the businesses that he has is a company called Rocket Ships. And what Rocket Ships does is they provide tour vans and tour buses for rock bands. And they travel all around the country. And as a matter of fact, the video for Camp Indian Springs was shot inside of one of those vans. They were really nice vans. They have like flat screen TVs. They have a bathroom in the back, couches, all kinds of stuff. And so Anthony and Derek had to go to Dallas and pick up a van and drive it to Utah to the Warp Tour, the concert in Salt Lake City that year. I forget what year it was, like uh, 2012. So they had to go from Texas to Utah. On the way, on their drive to Utah, they were cruising along, and Derek's driving, and he flips a switch somewhere right there around the, around the cockpit, you know, where the, where the driver sits. And so he flips the switch, and he and Anthony are like, well, I don't know what this switch just did. And so they're like, oh, well, whatever. And they kept going and having fun and talking and doing whatever they do. So they finally get to Salt Lake City. And they are running a little bit behind. And they get to where they need to drop the bus off. And they get out of the bus. And they smell this wretched smell. They smell something that is nauseating, literally made them want to vomit. Now keep in mind, 
this bus had been sitting in the heat in Dallas for a few weeks while it was getting fixed. I'm not going to say anything more than that because I don't want to gross anybody out too much. So they get out of the bus and they smell this wretched smell and they're like, where is this coming from? So they start sniffing around and they figure out it's coming from the bus. So they go to the side of the bus and Derek, very bravely, he lifts one of those panels up and almost throws up. And hearing him tell the story is so much better than me because he was actually there and he can give you a, you probably don't want the details actually. So he picks this thing up and he's like, oh my God. And what had happened is the, the switch that he put was the pump that pumps all the poo out of the tank and it's supposed to have a hose attached and then it goes into the sewage system, right? So he had flipped that switch, it made everything inside of that little cabin, the little part of, underneath the bus, everything exploded and it was covered in poo. The whole inside of that compartment was covered in poo. And Derek is standing there, he has his hands on his head, he's like, ah, oh, what am I gonna do? And he turns to Anthony, and Anthony's gone, because like a normal human being, Derek assumed that Anthony ran away from the smell. So just as he turns to Anthony, and he realizes Anthony was gone, he looks back, he looks again, and Anthony pops out of the bus. He comes out of the bus wearing a pair of rubber gloves. He has his bandana over his face like an old-timey bank robber. And he has, in one hand, a bottle of Windex, and in the other hand, he has a roll of uh, paper towels. And as he's walking past Derek, he goes, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, do. <laughs> That was the kind of guy Anthony was. That was his work ethic. He got in there, he cleaned it out, they delivered the bus, and they flew home and they were happy. Oh, I want to tell you one more thing about that song, about that, that story. Apparently, I wasn't there, Derek tells me that as Anthony was in there cleaning up the doo-doo, he was still asking himself, how can I make this better? And apparently in that situation, the answer is Willie Nelson songs. So he and Derek sang Willie Nelson songs while Anthony cleaned up poop. So as I told you in the beginning of this, Anthony was killed by a distracted driver. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the repercussions of what happened. Because you can already see this is a, this is a human being that a lot of people love. So I wanted to show you a couple of things that people post, posted on Facebook. This was the day that it happened. Your soul is amazing. You'll be missed more than you can possibly know. Somebody who seemed to embody life itself. Loss of a loved one is never easy. They were cousins. Anthony loved his family as well as his friends. He had a contagious zeal for life. It just doesn't seem right. Amazing friend and great person. You'll see these themes all over the place. Knowing every conversation started and ended this way, oh hell yeah, for you all day, Anthony Bronco. That's how he that's how he was with his friends. It's an adult thing. I'm gonna miss you, Anthony Bronco. You were one of the great ones. I don't want to skip over that one. It takes a little bit too long to explain. This is a this is a message from his mom, posted on his Facebook wall in February. I had a dream last night. You were in it. I love you for never. That's an inside joke. Sorry. I still miss you so much. This was in February. The person who wrote this was Anthony's ex-girlfriend. It was his ex, and this is how she felt about him, even though they had been broken up for about a year. Actually, that's about six months. Another message from his mom. There's a lot of pain that was caused, a lot of suffering, a lot of people cried a lot, and I can tell you honestly, I'm a grown man, I'm 42 years old, and I cry a lot. He introduced his friend Hannah to boxing. And a few weeks ago when the uh, Pacquiao Mayweather fight was, this is when she posted that. 
Thanks for making me realize what's important in life. I miss you. Mind you, this is a 19-year-old person. This is a person your own age who had this kind of wisdom to change people's lives. Thank you for your masterful sense of humor and your patient counsel, your unparalleled insight into the human condition. Most genuine people I ever had the pleasure of knowing. Of course, Anthony loved Taco Bell, just like a lot of his friends. This is a message from Derek. Derek is my age. One last one. Um, I was lucky enough to meet you when I very first came to Leon. This young woman, we're going to hear more from her in just a second. Okay, so one of the other things that has happened since Anthony has died is that this thing that we call getting bombed. And getting bombed simply means you are reminded of Anthony in a way that makes you giggle. It's a, it's a way of describing something that reminds you of Anthony in such a way that it takes something that's interesting and makes it more interesting, or takes something funny and makes it more funny. The very first bonk ever, I have to tell you this story, the very first bonk ever happened about two days after Anthony was killed. A group of his friends went to um, a place called Big Bend Highlight, which is an abandoned highlight building. All you law enforcement guys don't get mad at me right now. But they went into this abandoned um, highlight building, and his friends were there, and they were reminiscing, because the last time they, they had gone there, they had gone with Anthony. And it was odd. Everything with Anthony was fun, so they had a really good time. They wanted to go there and reminisce. And what they found was, somewhere on one of the walls, they found this, the bomb. That is Anthony's Twitter handle. It's his Instagram handle. It's his way of tagging himself in an abandoned building. And that was the first bonk. And the reason it was a bonk is because they didn't know it was there. Apparently what had happened is the last time when Anthony was still alive and they went to this highlight facility, he had snuck off, found some spray paint, tagged the wall, and then never told anybody about it. And he did this kind of stuff all the time. He would leave people little surprises. And those, when they surface now, are called bonks. My favorite bonk is this. This is a letter to a young lady named Chloe. When Anthony was a senior, Chloe was a freshman. And one of her English assignments was to get a upperclassman to write a letter to her that she would not open until she was a senior, which happened this past year. She just graduated a month ago. So Chloe got a letter from Anthony after Anthony was dead. And this is what the letter says. Dear Chloe, now you are a senior. You have your cap and gown. Hopefully by now you have decided what you're going to do. Whatever course of action you take, you have to go for it 100%. If you don't, there is no chance for success. However, you may not have decided yet, and that's all right too. Most seniors have no clue what they want to do when they graduate. But get on the ball, dog. <laughs> Chloe, you are basically my little sister, and as a freshman, you were hella cool. But now you're grown up, and now you've got to take life by the balls and show it who's boss. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Impossible is a word used by the weak to justify giving up. Never give up. Clo Clo. Life is what you make of it. The question is not who will let you, but rather who will stop you. Your big brother forever, Anthony Brown. I have a copy of this letter for each and every one of you if you want it. You can insert your own name. But don't forget those words. Nothing is impossible. Impossible is a word used by the weak to justify giving up. Never give up. The real repercussions of this, aside from friends, is family. Anthony had two younger brothers. They're 
technically his half-brothers. The kid at the top is Isaac. He is my son. The kid at the bottom is Christopher. That is Anthony's mother's child. Anthony was the best big brother I have ever even conceived of. He was better as a big brother than I can imagine. So you're asking yourself, how did the world lose this guy? How did this happen? What happened? To answer that question, I need to talk to you about decisions. I need to talk to you about the real life consequences of, this, of decisions and how a single decision can put a person in a coffin or in a concrete box and change the lives of friends, families, and even total strangers. To do that, I need to introduce you to Bob. I was introduced to Bob when Anthony, just before Anthony went to middle school. And Bob and Anthony were immediately inseparable. Bob was a good kid. Bob was a good kid, but he, he had trouble sometimes figuring out boundaries and figuring out how to make good decisions. So I'm going to give you two examples. I'm going to give you an example of Bob making a good decision and Bob making a bad decision. First, the good part. When Bob was in seventh grade, he had a lot of friends. And he had a lot of friends who weren't really popular with the other kids because Bob didn't really care. He was just hanging out with whoever. So one day in the lunchroom, he was sitting with this girl named Kelly Mayer. And some other kid came up and was like, Bob, why are you hanging out with her? She, why don't you come hang out with us? She's weird. And Bob's response was, we're all weird. Go away. You're bothering us. He stood up for his friend. That was a good decision. It was loyalty. So let me tell you about a bad decision. This one's a little bit funny, but a little bit not so funny. So again, in middle school, Bob was on the cross-country team. And I have to tell you another, another story first. Bob ran for president as an eighth grader. He ran for president as, uh, of the student body. And this was his campaign slogan. Bob equals cupcakes, because Bob just wanted to have a good time. So he thought associating himself with cupcakes was a good idea. So he ran this campaign, and he did a, he did a campaign video, because I, I don't know if they did this in your middle school, but in this middle school, um, at, right before they did the vote, every presidential candidate and vice presidential candidate had to do a video that was broadcast to all the classrooms on their closed circuit TV, right? You've probably seen this. You have a little TV in the corner. So everyone had to do their presentation, and all of the presentations were super boring and very awkward, as you can imagine, because we're talking about a bunch of eighth graders. <coughs> Not Bob's. When Bob did his video, it starts with him coming out from behind an American flag to the music of the immigrant song by Led Zeppelin, which goes a little bit like this. Uh -huh. But instead of singing that, he comes out and he goes, Bob! Bob won by a landslide. It wasn't even close. It was so bad that nobody even remembers who came in second, third, or fourth because Bob crushed it. It was a landslide. So he became student body president. The problem was that Bob was also on the cross country team. So at the last meet of the season, he's wearing his little purple, you know, sleeveless shirt that says Cobb on the front of it because that's the name of the middle school. So he's wearing the shirt, and he runs the race, and he ends the race. And mind you, Bob was not really that into cross country. He was just kind of doing it because his dad told him to try something. So he ends the race. He's sweaty. This kid comes up to him and says something snarky. And Anthony gives him the international symbol for, ah, you're my number, I'm your number one fan. And you can read between the lines and get what I'm saying. So, and then he tells the kid, F you. Bad decision. Because within earshot, there was a woman who had a kid at the meet, and she got very upset. And she found Bob's dad, who happened to be there over the last race of the season, and she told him how upset she was. Then she wasn't satisfied, so she went to the coach of the cross country team, and she told her how upset she was by Bob's behavior. 
The coach is then obliged to go talk to the principal, which means that Anthony lost his seat on the student council. Sorry, did I say Anthony? I meant Bob. Bob lost his seat on the student council. Sorry, got Anthony on the brain. So, I know what you're thinking yourself. I know what you're thinking. Who is this? Who, who did this? Is it Bob? This guy Bob, he sounds shifty. Did Bob do this? Who killed Anthony? It wasn't Bob. Bob did not kill Anthony. Let me tell you one more story, and this should kind of help you understand. When Anthony was in fifth grade, um, the woman I was dating and I were having a baby. The little boy that you saw in the picture a minute ago, his name is Isaac. And we told Anthony about this pregnancy. And then a few months into it, we sat down with Anthony and we were like, we're thinking of names. And at that point, I had already decided on the middle name. Isaac's middle name is Orion, like the constellation. So I was like, Anthony, his middle name is going to be Orion. We're, we're trying to think of first name. What do you think? So Anthony said, he said, you should name him Bob. And I said, Bob? Why Bob? And he goes, huh? Oh, if you name him Bob, then his name will be Bob, and his initials will be Bob. <laughs> and I cracked him, and I was like, I'm not going to name him Bob. And so Anthony looked at me, and he goes, well, if you're not going to name him Bob, then I'm going to use that name. Hi, my name is Bob. And he shook my hand, and for the next three years, he called himself Bob. So Anthony is Bob. So we know that Anthony didn't do it. We know that Bob didn't do it because Bob is Anthony. So who did this? Who did this terrible thing? I want you to think about something for a minute. Who here has ever been in a car with a distracted driver? I have. Who here has ever driven distracted? Never? Never? <laughs> Never? Anyone who raised your hand, it could have been you. You could have been the one who killed Anthony. It only takes a second of you not looking at the road, or me not looking at the road, to kill someone. And that someone could be Anthony.
bandanas for everyone. I have them in different colors. One for everyone's preference. And I want a couple of volunteers to come up and help me hand these out. And then you will be recruited into the bandana army. And you can go forth and you can tell people, tell people this story. Tell them that it's not just a quick distraction. This is real. You can kill people and you can kill yourself and you can do what we just saw. So don't, don't be part of the problem, be part of the solution. And if you think we can't end distracted driving, you're wrong, we can. Nothing is impossible. Impossible is a word used by the weak to justify giving up. This is our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and our email. Feel free to contact us anytime. My name is Demetrius Branca. I'm a foot soldier in the Bandana Army. You're all recruits of the Bandana Army. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much.